and welcome to Room of Rock with Ted and I. Now this time in the Room of Rock we're going to show you how to take your Stratocaster style guitar and take it from five sounds to seven sounds with a parts bill of probably ten pounds. Um, providing you've got the ability to solder or you know someone who could help you with some soldering um, it's an easy job that requires no drilling or external modifications to the guitar. So, if that's something that interests you, stick around. camera in a bit closer now so I can show you the parts you're going to need should you wish to carry out this mod yourself. First of all you're going to need a volume knob and hopefully that's focused up on that. That's a 250k audio taper push-pull volume knob. You could use a push-push or this is this more common push-pull. You want a split shaft not a solid shaft on it because the Stratocaster style knobs push on they're not held on with a grub screw so it's a split shaft so you'll want one of those and then you'll want some wire now the wire I've got here is just some guitar wire I bought off of eBay with cloth insulator so it's kind of got the vintage vibe about it but you might have some wire that you can use. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything specific. You don't want it too flimsy. You, you know, you want it to be reasonably um, beefy, but you know, slightly, you know, thicker wire so that um, it's easier to work with and it's got less tendency to the, for the insulator to melt away as you apply heat when you're soldering. So something like that, again, I think I paid a couple of quid for that for three colours, I think. So again, another eBay purchase. So they're the parts you're going to need, should you want to do the modification. Now you've seen the parts you need, I'll show you how the mod works before we show you exactly how to go about doing it. So, with the volume knob in, the guitar behaves exactly like a normal Stratocaster would. So you've got your bridge, bridge middle, middle, middle and neck, neck pickup. And then the idea is when you, and as I mentioned, this is a push-push pot I've used. So when that's now out, hopefully you can see that, that's sticking out, that turns on the neck pickup. So it bypasses the selector switch basically and automatically turns on the neck pickup. So when you're in the bridge pickup position on the five position selector switch, you've got the bridge pickup selected here and that's turned on the neck pickup. So that's put on your neck and your bridge pickup, a bit like a telecaster. So you get that center telecaster sound. But then if you move it up where it would be normally bridge and middle, you've now got all three pickups on because the pot's turned on the neck pickup. So you've got bridge, middle and neck. So that's giving you two additional sounds. And the sounds are both very usable. You know, you can get the guitar sound more like a Telecaster with the outer two pickups on. And then in that position, it sounds I suppose more like a, a mellow strat when you're in that what they call the outer phase sound so it's kind of a more mellow version of that in my opinion anyway I can plug the guitar in and show you well as we always say here in the room of rock if you like what we do please think about giving us a thumbs up and maybe even subscribing it means a lot to us it means a lot to young teddy boy there and it encourages us to make more online content and, you know, leave something in the comments if you've had a go at this mod or you've done this mod and you like it or you do it on 
back of this video and you like or dislike it let us know or if you let us know of any other mods you've done to your guitar that you think are worthwhile and other people should know about it it's always interesting to hear what people do and what they get up to with their guitars because they're a very personal thing you know and what one person does to their guitar might not make sense to anyone else but it might make perfect sense to them and their playing style so anyway, leave a comment and maybe think about giving us a thumbs up and subscribing. What I've done, I've brought the camera in a little bit closer. So now you can see how the switch works in operation. And also you can hear what the additional two sounds sound like. So we'll start off. So with the volume knob in, pushed in, you've got your normal five position switch. So that's your... That's your bridge, bridge in middle, middle, middle and neck, then neck. So now, with the selector switch in the bridge position and the volume knob out, which has turned on the neck pickup, that now gives us the outer two pickups. So that gives us that Telecaster style sound. Push the knob in. So that's the bridge position only. Up, so that's bridge and neck. So I think you can hear that's definitely in the old Telecaster territory. just go on to the what we call the out of phase sound which is actually the middle and bridge so you can hear the difference so you can hear it is definitely a distinctly different sound from that so now so that's two outer pickups on so then if you move it into the middle and bridge, so that's your normal out of phase sound. Now pull out the volume knob so you've engaged the bridge pickup, the neck pickup, sorry, so you've got all three pickups on. And off. So that's all three pickups on. So I think you can definitely hear that is a more mellow sound, smoother. That's all three pickups on. Turn off the neck pickup. Neck pickup on. So I think all three pickups on gives for a quite a nice rhythm sound. Turn off the neck pickup, so it's now just middle and bridge. And I 
think you can hear that's definitely got more bite than all three pickups on all three pickups on is definitely a smoother sound to my mind so you've got a telecaster sound and you've got a smoother take on the outer phase sound so you've heard the sounds hopefully you like them i'll show you how to go about wiring it up right so i've got the guitar now laid out on the table where it's well supported on some cloth so it doesn't get damaged or it doesn't damage the table because um, the last thing you want to do of course is damage your guitar while you're working on it that's not the whole point of the exercise the first job to do is either take the strings off or slacken them off to be able to get the scratch plate off the guitar to access the wiring scratch plates held on by various crosshead screws so you want to make sure you've got the right size screwdriver um, for example that one look if you can see that's too small they're just rocking in there and all all that will happen trying to get them out with something like that is you just mar them and mark them which is then you can get sharp edges on them and which can scratch your arm when you're playing so by that one that's a nice snug fit in there by way of a change so start by just removing all the screws and put them somewhere safe now I'm not going to bore you with me sitting here taking out 11 screws or whatever it is that secures the scratch plate so I'll get those out and um, then we'll come back to it all the screws that secure the scratch plate are out so you can see that's that's loose now one word of caution one thing i ought to point out is if you've got a guitar obviously that's more valuable because of its historic um, nature if it's an older fender i mean even the 70s fenders now are becoming collectible and commanding higher values originality is everything in terms of value so if you've been in there and altered the wiring even if it's something you put back when they're valuing a guitar and they're checking it for originality they can tell what's new and what's original solder so it would degrade the value of the guitar if you've got something that is you know worth considerable money you know i would err on the side of caution or get advice off your local guitar shop or luthier before you did anything but on something like this this is a as you can see a run-of-the-mill squire guitar which is never going to be worth much money um, even though it's a great guitar it doesn't matter so and the guitar is far from standard I think the only standard bits on it now are the um, the body the jack plate and the neck itself pretty well everything else has been changed over the years but just a word of caution there so the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to slacken the strings off and see if I can get enough um, slack to be able to gently take out the pick guard. Now I've slackened all the strings off so what I'm going to try and do now is gently take the scratch plate off without having to take the strings off because at the moment the strings are okay they don't need changing. I mean a good time to do this mod would obviously be when the guitars do a string change anyway then it makes it really quite straightforward. Now this guitar has got 22 frets so the fretboard overhangs a scratch plate so I think the first thing to do is to just gently ease it out from the scrap end of the neck so that I can lift it up above that there we go so that's pinged up and then that does look like I might be able to pull that out gently I mean I'm not saying this is necessarily the way to do it far from it but in this case it's the way I'm going to have a go just to get it out I'd recommend you, as I say, you do it at the time of a string change and then it's going to be a lot less fiddly. But that is coming out. Slacken that one off a bit more. That's it. I think we're nearly there now. There we go. So we've got the control plate off now what I've done on this guitar is I've put a couple of connectors on here so that I can just 
take the scratch plate off, disconnect it, because I've also got a scratch plate that I have had on here that's got um, a couple of humbuckers on it and uh, a single coil. So consequently, for ease of changing over, I've put a couple of like automotive connectors on here, look, if you can see, so you can just unplug. And what I've done with those, if you see, I've made them so you can't reverse them. One's um, a male and one's a female connector. So you can't put them the wrong way round. So now I can move the guitar aside and I've got the uh, scratch plate with all the wiring on it there. Well, to try and give you a better understanding of how this works, I'll show you the switch. Now, the, the switch is what's known as a double pole, double terminal switch. So, these centre two are really just duplicates. You've got two switches in one, effectively. I don't know if you can see that. So you've got two centre terminals, which are like the common, they, they are the input. And when the volume knobs depressed, it links that to that terminal and that to that terminal. So those two effectively are on. What we want is when you pull it out, we want it to be on so that turns on the signal for the um, neck pickup. So we want that one and that one or that one and that one to be linked, which they are when that switch is pulled out. So down links those two, out links those two. So all we're going to do is use two of the terminals, the middle one and the one nearest the actual volume control itself, um, as an on-off switch to then take a signal from the neck pickup straight to the volume control. So then that goes to the output to permanently turn it on. I've had a little bit of a rethink about how I'm going to show you how to do this because the trouble is when you're actually working in here it's such a small area it's really hard to see what you do but it's actually not that difficult a modification to carry out so I thought with the aid of a bit of soldering on the switch we've got the push-pull volume knob and maybe a sketch or two I can show you how to do it and it'll be easier so the first thing with the volume knob, you've got three connections that need replacing from the volume knob already on your guitar. Now, as the volume knob sitting in the guitar, the one looking down from the top on the right is earthed. So that pin goes back to the earth on the body of the pot. Now, you'll probably find other earth wires on there as well because everything gets earthed. So there's an earth wire touching all the components on the guitar. So the first thing is to put a little jumper wire from here onto the earth point on the pot, which I'll show you, I'll solder this. The middle then goes to the output. So this wire here on here is the output um, and that goes to the jack socket. So if you see a wire that goes down into the cavity of the guitar heading towards the jack socket, that's the middle wire off of the volume pot. And then with the volume pot in position, the left hand um, lug, that goes to the output wire on the switch. So the switch goes, so the switch basically takes a, a feed in from your neck middle bridge pickup. And then dependent on the position of the switch, the output is then sent to the volume knob. So for example, if you've got the switch right back, the output from the bridge um, pickup goes to the volume knob. And then if you've got it one notch up and it's in the middle and bridge, that output, these, those two inputs go into the switch and they're switched to the output, which then goes to the volume knob. Hopefully I'm making myself clear and not making it sound more complicated than it is. So in essence, three wires to swap over on the pot are, as you're looking at it from above, you've got your right hand one goes to earth, so that lug just solders to the earth, earth in the body. 
The middle one goes to the output on the um, jack socket and the left hand one goes to the output from the switch. Well hopefully the camera is focused up and you can see what I'm going to do. But what I've done is I've got the pot and I've got a little place there that I can stand it in so I can work on it without um, having to hold it. So the first thing you do with anything is what they call tin the joints so you get some solder on them. So you, you got your soldering iron, I mean there, there'll be videos on YouTube showing you how to solder but I'll just give you a couple of tips. The point with soldering is the component you're soldering has to be hot enough to melt the solder. The soldering iron heats the component, the component then melts the solder. That's the way you get it to flow nicely. So for example, I'm going to put an earth point on the top of the pot. So I'm going to put the soldering iron on there and leave it to get that warm. Then I'm going to introduce some solder and now that's melting and then we should get a nice shiny area of solder which hopefully you can see and when the solder is nice and shiny that indicates a good joint so and I'll do the same with the three tags on the actual volume pot themselves now as you might have seen this pot has been used previously for something for some other project in the past so that's hence why there's evidence of old solder on there where it's been unsoldered at some point. Right, so I'm now happy that those joints or those lugs have all got a coat of fresh solder on them so they're ready to take the wires. So the first thing I do, I'll get a little bit of black wire and this is going to be the little um, flying cable that goes from the pot onto the earth so I'll just measure off a little amount clip it off and then with a, a knife carefully just go around it to take off the insulation and what you might find is when you solder the heat from the soldering process actually um, makes the insulation burn back a little bit so maybe when you're cutting the insulation cut slightly less or you just nip the inner down a bit to get it to the length you want it's not necessarily the recommended way of of doing that but there we go now um, hopefully you can see there's two exposed ends so again I get my solder hold the wire on the soldering iron to get it hot and then introduce some solder on there to tin the wire flip it over and do the same on the other end, get the wire hot and there again hopefully you can see that we can, the wires tin both ends so, as I said the right hand wire take a flying lead from the right hand Lug on the pot, again making sure both parts, both the wire and the lug on the pot are hot enough to melt the solder. So then you end up with a soldered on wire. So you, then that wire goes up to our earth point on the top. So 
So there you've got your flying earth lead from the right hand side of the pot up to the earth point on the top of the pot. Now hopefully you can see I've cut a bit of the insulation out of the wire here so then I can double that over and then I can now tin that again as I did the other bits. So hopefully you can see now that's tinned and that wire gets soldered onto the centre connector on the little push-pull switch. So there we go, we've got this wire that's come from our selector switch, now goes to the centre part of the push-pull switch, and then this wire is going to join back to its original place on the volume knob, which I shall do now. Tin it up. So hopefully you can see that. So the selector wire from the switch has come down to the centre pin and then onto the volume. So effectively that wire is unbroken still. So wherever the selector switch output is will be what's going to the volume. Now the thing we need to do, so that's the output, we need to then have a wire going from when we pull the switch out to the pin there, which would be the pin nearest the pot, because that would be the two that are linked. Um, and then from there, that goes up to the selector switch. Now the trick's going to be, we're going to put another wire here, so that when that switch is pulled out, those two are linked, and that is going to go directly back to the selector switch, to the output of the neck pickup meaning that when that's clicked out, the output of the neck pickup is connected directly to the output of the volume, meaning it's, it's on again. So what we do now is we solder another wire on here, I'll choose another colour, and then that's going to go off to where the wire from the neck pickup goes to the selector switch. So now for clarity I've got a piece of blue wire which I've cut the insulation off and tinned and that's going to be connected to that terminal, the terminal nearest the volume pot there. So I'm going to solder that on there. So hopefully you can see that. So that blue wire, when that switch is pulled out, will be connected from the output of the switch, which is connected to the volume. That will be connected to the output from the neck pickup. So if I get the scratch plate over, I'll show you. So your modified wire ends like that 
scratch plates there. Hopefully you can see that. So, the blue wire, if you trace back, there's obviously the neck pickup and the blue wire from the neck pickup goes back here on the selector switch. So that blue wire would connect up there where that red wire is on the one that's actually done. So you solder that on there because that's a direct output from the neck pickup. So that would then go to that terminal on the switch. So when that's pulled out, those two are connected. So that would take the neck pickup direct to the volume. This one goes to the output from the selector switch. And the output from the selector switch is the one that goes to the volume, which is on this one, is this end one. So the output of the selector switch then makes its way down to the volume. Where the neck pickup joins the five way switch is the blue one, and the red one is from the output of the selector switch that would normally go direct to the volume. And then when that's clicked out, that means you get the neck pickup turned on whatever position the five position switch is in. I might draw a couple of sketches just to try and make it a little bit clearer so you uh, understand what it's doing. But basically, there's two wires to alter, that's all. So the output here from the selector switch that would normally go direct to the volume there, you've rerouted that to the middle lug on the switch. And then with a little jump lead that goes down to the volume as it normally would. And then the blue wire, the additional wire from the terminal on the selector switch nearest the actual volume pot itself that goes off to where the neck pickup joins the five way switch. So basically you just click that out and it automatically turns on the neck pickup. Well to help explain it I'll show you a quick rough sketch of A, this is the standard wiring, so you've got here the feed from the neck pickup, the middle pickup, and the bridge pickup. They all go into the selector switch, which is obviously a bit of a simplified view. And then you've got the output from the selector switch goes to the volume. Then the centre lug on the volume goes to your output jack, and then the other wire goes back to earth onto the pot body itself. So that gives you your combination of five sounds. So that's the standard wiring. Now here is the modified wiring. And this shows here the switch on the back of the pot and the pot itself. So the, the difference is the output from the switch now Instead of going onto the volume pot as it did, it goes to the center lug of the push pull switch, then onto the volume knob. So that means that output is still going direct to the volume knob, but it's terminated on the center lug of the switch. Then you've got your earth as normal here, the one we showed wiring on. And then you've got the additional wire, the wire that I used in blue, going from there. So when the knob's pulled out, those two will be linked. And that is from where the neck pickup joins the selector switch, and it comes down on there. So basically, when the switch is out, the signal from the neck pickup will flow down to here. It will then be able to go down this cable, and this cable by the way of the switch, it's joined to the centre lug and to the output of the volume knob, meaning that the neck pickup is always on. When the knob's pulled in, that terminal will be connected to the terminal at the back, which is absolutely doing nothing. So that would mean that it works just as an ordinary Stratocaster. Because this wire here, the normal output wire that we've amended, is still a continuous wire, but it just almost stops off at the center point of the switch. So hopefully, you know, you can freeze frame or whatever and pause and have a look. That makes it a bit clearer um, because I thought actually just wiring on the guitar, it's just too fiddly to get in there and show you there's too many wires. Whilst it isn't hard, 
it's just a lot easier to look at and see on a sketch of paper so you can understand how it works. Now don't, this is simplified, this doesn't show the wires going off to the tone controls but you don't need to disturb those, you're only going to be disturbing the output from the switch and where the neck pickup joins the switch they're the only two points you need to interfere with the standard wiring. Well if you remember earlier on I mentioned how I'd put connectors on here so I could swap scratch plates over um, and this shows that um, point. So this is the original three single coil scratch plate and it's got the two output connectors there. Hopefully you can see those. So they plug straight into the guitar but if I wanted to change that over I've got another scratch plate here which has got two humbuckers and a single coil and again when you turn it over it's got the same output connectors so basically to swap those over as pre-wired units is just a case of unplugging two wires and plugging them back in obviously you've got to unscrew it all and screw it back in but it just shows you it gives you a bit of versatility if you've got a second scratch plate or access to a second scratch plate. One thing I would mention is where I um, took the scratch plate off leaving the strings on that's obviously probably not the best way to do it if you're really worried about the finish on the guitar in case you do scratch something as you try and ease it out. So be warned obviously the, the best way is to do it at string change time and take the strings off and then it gives you a lot more access to just lift the scratch plate out of the cavity. Well we hope you found that useful, showing you how you can go from five sounds to seven sounds on your Stratocaster, all with the aid of a bit of wire and just a push-pull or a push-push pot on your volume. So we'll see you again soon in the Room of Rock with Ted and I.